Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lou Monopau. I'm the Tennis Programs Coordinator for the San Francisco Recreation and Parks Department. This is Daisy Monopau, my uh, younger daughter, who is also a park employee and has grown up in the Rec and Park. Uh, she's a top tennis player and basketball player. And this is my older daughter, Olive Monopau, who has also grown up in the Rec and Park under this program that we run. And she is also a top tennis player and basketball player. So what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about the fundamentals of playing tennis. So tennis is broken into two components. The first component is actually being able to strike a ball, to hit a stroke and the other is the footwork that is associated with it. So the first thing we're going to discuss is hitting a forehand ground stroke. So if you are right-handed, that would be swinging the racket on the right side of your body, okay? If you're left-handed, it would be on the left side of your body as you face the net. Okay, so let's go into a little bit of technique. Technique is almost a pure technical game. It's very high on the technical scale. Other sports are very high on the physical scale. Tennis is very high on the technical scale. The first thing you're going to learn is the position of your shoulders. So your shoulders need to be perpendicular to the net. Okay, very important. That's the number one skill. So when your shoulders are perpendicular to the net, you are in a position to be able to strike a tennis ball in the same way that a golfer strikes a golf ball, a quarterback throws a pass, a baseball hitter is perpendicular to the flight of the pitch coming to the catcher. So this is a very important skill. The next part will be that wherever you see the ball for ground strokes, which is a ball that hits the ground first, your racket is significantly below wherever you see the ball. In baseball, you line up behind it, it's a level swing. But for a ground stroke, which again, is a ball that hits the ground first and bounces up, the swing is low to high. You'll probably hear that in a lot of tennis magazines, but the science behind it is that the first 90 degrees of your stroke, which is the low part, provides lift for your shot. That's what gets the ball over the net. The second 90 degrees of your stroke, which is the high part, provides spin noticeably top spin. So it's this forward rotation that drags the ball down into the court. So basically, if you have a ball and you are just bumping it off off your strings, there's like no spin. But as you start to rotate the ball and the racket, you can see that the racket isn't hitting it this way, but it's going this way. And then you can see the rotation of the ball, okay? So that's going to be the first thing that we're going to talk about. Olive and Daisy are going to demonstrate what this looks like. We'll talk through the footwork as we hit. I will toss a few balls and you'll see what that looks like. All right, so now we are going to actually show you how to strike a ball. So the first thing that's gonna happen is that you need your shoulders to be perpendicular like this. You're going to grip your racket, take position, your racket is going to be back and down. Your left arm is going to be out and your shoulders are now perpendicular to the net. Your feet are lined up this way. This is known as a square dance. So this is the technique for striking a topspin forehand. The racket coming from below the flight of the ball. The wrist rotates into the left hand. This part of your shoulder, your deltoid comes up under your chin, you follow through up high and you turn on your back foot. Okay, so now we're going to toss a few balls and you can see what that looks like. All right then, so let's go ahead and go through the first backhand, which we're going to learn today, which is the two-handed backhand. So now your hands are going to be next to each other on the racket like this, directly in line with each other. The racket is going to be back and down. 
Your stance will either be a square stance or a closed stance is permissible for this particular stroke. Your racket will come from below the front of the ball. It will come up, make contact here with your arms at full extension. That is the lift part that gets it over the net. And then the second part will come up high, which will give the ball its top spin, which will be dragging it into the court. And you will turn on your back foot and hold your follow through up high. The second backhand we're going to learn is the one-handed topspin backhand. So now you have to change your grip for this backhand. All your knuckles on your dominant hand line up in a row on the very top panel of bevel. This is known as bevel number one. Your racket handle is in the geometric shape of an octagon. So if you're right-handed and you go clockwise, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now your right hand is at the top of the throat where it meets the base of the hitting face. The racket is down below again. Now the racket comes up, makes contact much further out in front. This is the lift part which gets it over the net. And then the follow through is up high and your left arm is back. And your stance is either square or closed. And the last backhand we're going to learn is the slice backhand. And you need to learn another grip in addition to the other one that you just learned, which is the Eastern backhand. Now we're going to learn the Continental grip backhand. So now, again, if you look at the butt of your racket, it's in a geometric shape of an octagon. So we're going to place our base index knuckle and heel of hand on bevel number two. Okay, so that looks like this. The left arm, again, if your right hand is, is at the top of the throat and at the base of the hitting face. Your arms are up, your deltoid is under your chin. Your stance can either be square or closed. Now the racket comes from above, makes contact around an extension of your right hip. Your left arm releases and it ends up low with the arm back. So first we have all of hitting the two-handed backhand. Again, note the technical requirements. The shoulders are perpendicular to the net. Racket is back and down. In this particular instance, the hands are close to each other. The stance can either be the square stance or the close stance. So as you can see, all of comes from low to high. That lifts the ball over the net. Her shoulders are perpendicular to the net. Now Daisy will demonstrate the one-handed topspin backhand with an eastern backhand grip. Again, that is all your knuckles on the very top panel, which is panel number one. Stands here can either be closed or square. Left arm is at the bottom of the racket head and at the top of the throat. So you can see coming from below, good high follow through, the left arm releases, and the weight is on the front foot. And now the final backhand, which is the slice backhand. Again, we have a different grip, which is a continental grip. Your base index knuckle and heel of hand on bevel number two. This particular shot is hit with a closed stance. And the motion is from this time, the converse of topspin. It's above the flight of the ball. And as a result, coming down, it creates underspin. Notice how the left hand moves back, shoulders remain perpendicular, and the right arm extends on the follow through with the weight on the front foot. The last thing we're going to work on today is really the world of the volley. And in order to hit volleys, again, you need to have a particular grip, a particular swing flight path, and a particular stance. Everything we're doing right now is about ball striking technique. Footwork will come later. So again, we're going to have a continental grip, bevel number two, base index knuckle and heel of hand on bevel number two. The non-scientific way of finding this grip is like you're hammering a nail. Now, we just did the backhand slice, but it is akin to the volley, the only difference being that the ball now is struck in the air. So again, 
Our technique is we have a closed stance, shoulders are perpendicular to the net, the grip is continental, shoulders are also pointing in the direction that you want to hit. This time, Daisy will catch the ball in the air and not let it bounce. And notice how the ball is spinning underneath. And now we just did the backhand volley, now we're going to do the forehand volley. Even though the grip and the swing flight path is the same, the strokes are actually dramatically different from each other, largely because now when you hit the forehand slice or volley, you're hitting shoulders behind you. Whereas when you hit the backhand volley or slice, you're hitting shoulders in front of you. So this shot's a little bit more difficult. So again, we have a continental grip, base index knuckle and heel of hand on bevel number two. The racket face starts around the forehead, opens up like this and moves back a little bit. Stance is closed. Now in teaching this particular shot, and this is only a learning tool, the left arm is out, and you're going to make contact around the midline of your body and then the racket goes in underneath like this. Shoulder discipline is extremely important in this particular shot as it is in all shots but this shot really needs to be uh, very disciplined with your shoulders because the tendency is if it's such an awkward shot as this is that people will want to turn their shoulders open and you want to kind of prevent that. So here, all of us are going to hit a forehand volley now. This time the ball is going to be again hitting the air and will not touch the ground first. Her left arm is out, her racket face is open, and as she carves underneath it, she creates underspin. Again, the difference between a chip and a volley is only one in which the ball, in this particular instance, is hit in the air as opposed to touching the ground first. So now what we're going to do is we're going to walk through some hitting drills that you can do, in particular with the volley and the slice. Again, the slice is the ball hits the ground first and comes up and it's still a high to low motion. And then we will move on to volleying back and forth, which is a little bit faster. And now Olive and Daisy are going to just very gently tap the ball back and forth with this very new and difficult technique. These will be slices as the ball will hit the ground first. They'll be moving their feet, getting their shoulders perpendicular to the net, and aiming the ball back and forth to each other. So let's see how they do. Now, when you are working on technique, it's not important to hit the ball on one bounce. What is important is how you react to the flight of the ball. So you can see that if the ball bounces a few times or it goes to the net, that's fine. We're really working on the shoulder turn, the grip, the swing flight path, getting the feet into the proper position. And this is known as a live ball drill, where you just keep the ball going. Every time you're hitting it, you're working on your technique. And now what we're going to work on, which is the volley, which is very difficult and very advanced. So one of the things I just want to remind everybody is that tennis is a very difficult game. The skill set is high, so you have to be very, very patient with yourself and don't get frustrated. So now they're going to volley back and forth to each other as best they can without letting the ball drop. show some very light hitting drills again when you are drilling and when you are practicing you're really working on your technical components in a live ball feed so it's not important to hit the ball in one bounce it's 
really important that you're reacting properly with a good shoulder turn. If it's your forehand, your left arm out, your racket back, your stance, and all those things. So now it becomes much more difficult. Now, after you've done your warm up, now the fun part comes. Now you play points. So, we're going to do what's known as a feed in 10 pointer. And this time, they are actually trying to beat each other. Uh, when you are playing tennis and you're playing points, you need to hit the ball either on one bounce or in the air, which brings in the volley component. Your field of play for singles is going to be the single sideline there, the single sideline there, and the baseline there. And then they will play to 10 points, and this is a good way to start to try to execute your technique while you are playing competitive. understanding what you're trying to focus on and work on when you practice and ultimately when you play points. So let's just do a quick review. So first of all, the most important thing to learn when you play tennis is that your shoulders need to be perpendicular to the neck. If you are hitting ground strokes, the racket head needs to be under the flight of the ball to provide lift 
that gets it over the net. The second part, providing topspin, which drags the ball back into the court. We work on primarily two stances today, a square stance and a closed stance. We did work on two grips today, and we'll get more into a third grip later on when we delve deeper into the forehand, and that is the continental grip, which is the base index knuckle and heel of hand on bevel number two of your racket handle, and the eastern backhand grip, which is all the knuckles in a row on bevel number one for the topspin backhand, a la Roger Federer and Pete Sampras. I do have one more question for you that I would like you to maybe share in the comments section. One thing that I purposely left out was I wanted you to think of how you actually aim a ball in tennis. Talked about a lot of technique, but that's a very important one. I will give you a hint. And the hint relates into a quarterback throwing a football, a golfer hitting any kind of drive, and a baseball pitcher throwing to the catcher. And that's all for now. I would like to thank uh, my daughters, Daisy Monopau and Olive Monopau for helping me in this. And signing off until next time when we have more informative and technical instruction on how to play the game of tennis. Thank you very much.